So emails are transferred from place to place utilizing, well, many networks, right? These networks communicate with each other. And there's a protocol, there are protocols, plural, that are used to make email transferring possible. Uh, and I'm going to be telling you about a few of them. Uh, email protocols such as the SMTP protocol, which is a simple mail transfer protocol, operates at TCP port 25, is used to transfer the email from source to destination. It uses something called the Mail Transfer Agent, MTA. Then there's the Post Office Protocol. You may be familiar with this. It's uh, TCP port uh, 110 and 995, depending on whether it's secure or not. And uh, Post Office Protocol allows you to retrieve mail from one location to another. So you may have a way, you may have a, a, um, a client, a email client on your desktop that allows you to receive mail and POP, right? POP version 3, Post Office Protocol version 3, is uh, one of the ways that you can retrieve messages. There's also another protocol called the Internet, mail, uh, Internet Message Access Protocol, IMAP, an IMAP protocol is used um, also just like the POP protocol is used to retrieve mail. The difference between POP and IMAP is that POP will, um, POP will remove the message from the server and give it to you on your client. IMAP will leave a copy of the message on the server and give you the message. So that's the difference between POP and IMAP. There is something called, there is a var spool mail directory where messages are kept inside of Linux. Uh, the email client that you have on your machine is known as the mail user agent or MUA. Okay, so mail transfer agent that transfers mail using SMTP and mail user agent which is your client on your machine that, retrie uh, that retrieves the mail. So there are four popular email servers. There is SendMail, there is PostFix, there's Exim, E-X-I-M, and then there's QMail. There are also additional software that are around, such as Cyrus, IMAP, Dovecot. These pull uh, the mail from the location. There's also FetchMail, which pulls mail using POP or IMAP. There's Evolution, Kmail, Pine, and Mutt. These are all mail readers or clients that allow you to retrieve mail from your um, mail server. So uh, when you want to send and receive mail, you are able to use the mail command, specify the subject, specify who you're sending mail to, and then, of course, eventually, um, you know, put in your body of your message and you're able to send mail across inside of the Linux arena to whoever you choose. You can use something called mail queue so that you can manage an email queue. You're able to use send mail um, to manage your mail queue. Uh, you can use post mail and exim to uh, manage queues as well. You can also have an alias. Now, alias allows one address to accept mail for another. For example, if you are an executive, you may have your assistant uh, transpo uh, transpose. Why don't I say transpose? You may have your assistants do all of the mailing for you on, on your behalf. As a result, alias would allow your assistant to send mail or to accept mail on behalf of you, the executive. Okay? So you can create aliases to send mail across as well. Now, email security, of course, is rather important as well. Um, I know that you may remember and you may also realize and recognize, since it may have happened in your organization, that through mail and through messages, you may have had viruses come across. Correct? People may have added viruses or created links that people have clicked on and it has spread a virus among your organization's machines. So email security is very important. As a matter of fact, 
there's one statistic that states that about 95 to 98 percent of messages that come through your organization are junk mail. Yeah, you believe that? Anywhere between uh, 2 and 5 percent of the total messages that your mail server processes are actual real messages. The rest are all junk not necessarily all infected with viruses, but that those messages are all junk and not really meant for any one person. Uh, and they very well may be prone to viruses and virus attacks. So that's emailing and email protocols, uh, email clients, um, and how emails are transferred and such. So hopefully you're getting a little better handle. I'm sure you guys have been using emails for quite some time. So looking behind the curtain or checking to see how emails work. Although this, by the way, this module is only going to be a, a brief introduction to emailing. I want to let you know that emailing and messaging in general is a specialty. There are people that have devoted their professional lives and careers to doing nothing but managing messages and managing email servers, since it is a vast universe, correct? It is possible for an organization to survive a few minutes, maybe even a few hours, without the internet. But if emails aren't working within an organization, you are well aware how crippled an organization may get. So uh, not that I'm saying internet is any less important or internet access is any less important, but messaging is very, very critical to the communication and the ability for organizations to communicate with each other and within the organization as well. So emailing and messaging is something that we are introducing in this particular module to give you a, an idea of how messaging and emailing works. Uh, but uh, by no means is this going to be an expert, comprehensive introduction uh, to emailing and messaging because that would require quite a bit more time.